Okay. Now let us use the spectral sequences to show that the short exact sequence of complexes will induce a long exact sequence of cohomology. Okay, now let's prove this. First, let's compute the spectral sequence using the upward orientation. All the uh, objects in Sorry, this should be the upward arrow. All the objects in the first page will be zero because we have already assumed that this is a short exact sequence so that each of those columns will be exact. And when we take the cohomology along each column, each cohomology will be zero. And the sequence will stabilize after page 1. And most importantly, we will get the cohomology of the total complex equal to 0. OK, now let's compute the spectral sequence with the rightward orientation. In the first page, we will get induced arrows between the cohomology groups and in the second page, we get our nice move arrows. And we denote this nice move arrow by delta superscript i. I have forgot to assign names to uh, these arrows. So the map from the complex A to complex B will be denoted F. And the map from complex B to complex C, G. So, by our convention in algebraic topology or homological algebra, so this map will be denoted by F superscript I star, and this is G superscript I star. Okay, so now each arrow, each arrow will get its name. Now let's first look at the exactness in here at h i of b. Since this b superscript i sub 2 is a cohomology at here, so the exactness at h i of b will be equivalent to b superscript i sub 2 being equal to 0. To show how this uh, B superscript I sub 2 is 0. We need to look at the third page. In the third page, there will be no arrows connecting any two of these nine objects because, as you know, the arrows in the third page look like this going three steps up and two steps left. And as a result, the sequence will stabilize after the third page. In particular, let's look at this diagonal line. On this diagonal line, if we replace all the subscripts by infinity, and we notice that this b superscript i sub 3 is actually equal to the b superscript i sub 2 in the second page, because there are no arrows connecting this guy with any non-zero object, or the arrows coming into here and out of, out of it are all uh, zero arrows. So taking the uh, cohomology group at here, we see the object at this place doesn't change. So this is actually equal to b superscript i sub 2. Uh, sorry, this is a typo. This should be b superscript i sub infinity. Now, by the filtration theorem, we get the filtration starting with c superscript i minus 1 infinity and uh, end up with some cohomology of the total complex. 
But according to our first step, we know cohomology of the total complex is zero. So this is zero. And as its subquotient is B superscript I is zero. But we know from here that B superscript I sub two is actually equal to the B superscript I sub infinity. So we get B superscript I sub two is zero. So we get this. And uh, as a result, we have proved the exactness in here. So we have completed uh, one third of our goal. We have proved the exactness in here. And we are going to prove the exactness in those two places. Now let's go back to this filtration. Actually, from here we know every object is zero because they are all subquotient of this cohomology of the total complex. So everything in the third page will become zero. In particular, if you look at C superscript i sub 3 and uh, C superscript i minus 1 sub 3, they being 0 has uh, an important implication because C i minus 1 sub 3 is a cohomology in here, which is the co kernel of delta superscript i and a superscript i sub 3 is actually the cohomology at here which is the kernel of delta superscript i so both kernel co-kernel and kernel of delta sub i are zero which means the delta superscript i is an isomorphism. This means a superscript i a subscript 2 is isomorphic to c superscript i minus 1 subscript 2. And what does this tell us? This tells us the cohomology group of this, this guy, which is uh, C superscript i minus 1 sub 2 is isomorphic to the cohomology at here, which is A superscript i sub 2. This arrow is G superscript i minus 1 star. And the cohomology in here is the co kernel of this guy. And if you look at this object, a superscript i sub 2, which is a cohomology at here, and which is the kernel of this guy, the kernel of f superscript i star. So this guy is isomorphic to the kernel of f superscript i star. Okay. Now we are ready to connect the i minus 1 cohomology of the complex C and uh, the i's cohomology of the complex A. As before, uh, we will introduce an intermediate subject between them. So this is part of the uh, long exact sequence we want to prove. We want to connect the i minus 1 cohomology of C and i cohomology of A. To this end, we write O kernel uh, of G superscript i minus 1 sub star and kernel, or kernel of 
f i star equal to x. So we introduce an intermediate object x. And uh, from this cohomology to x, choose uh, an epimorphism which is precisely the kernel uh, of g i minus i minus 1 star. This is a co kernel. Arrow is a kernel of f i star. denoted by m super squared i minus 1. And the connecting morphism between uh, those cohomologies will be the composition of these two maps. I know there's a confusion about the uh, notations I use, so I, I denote both the arrow and the object by a kernel or co-kernel. So this is a convention in abelian categories. In abelian categories, a kernel is an object associated with the map. So kernel is really two things, object together with an arrow. Same thing for co-kernel. So I have abused notations in here. So kernel or co-kernel means both arrow or object. So you know what that means. But, but I have new notations like e super square i minus 1 and uh, m uh, super square i minus 1 to somehow distinguish uh, between the object and the arrow. Now we can finish the proof by showing the exactness in those two places. Now let's prove the exactness at the S cohomology of the complex C. We will show the kernel of this composition is same as the image of this uh, g i minus one star. Okay. The kernel of this composition, we first claim that it's, it is uh, isomorphic to the kernel of e i minus one, because in the theory of abelian categories, the monomorphism doesn't contribute to this composition. If you don't know about this result in abelian categories, you can think about the category of modules. In the category of modules, a monomorphism doesn't kill anything. So when composed map uh, with a monomorphism, the kernel doesn't change. And this equality follows from our definition. We defined EI minus 1 by the co kernel of GI minus 1 star. So this is by definition. And this is by definition of image. The image in Abelian category is defined to be uh, the kernel of co-kernel. Now let's prove the exactness at the ith cohomology of the complex A. The image of this composition is the same as the image of this monomorphism, because in theory of Abelian categories, this epimorphism does, a, does not contribute to uh, the image of this map. So this is the same as the image of this uh, m i minus 1. And by definition, the image is a co uh, kernel of a co-kernel. And since, since the kernel of f i star is m i minus 1, there's a dual statement if you take the co-kernel of m i minus 1 and you plug in the plug in this uh, definition of m minus 1 uh, in here you get the kernel co-kernel kernel of f i 
star. And by theory of abelian category, actually by definition of the abelian category, since the kernel of something is always a monomorphism, so and uh, the kernel of co-kernel of a monomorphism in this monomorphism itself by abelian category theory. Now we have proved the exactness in here and here. So uh, we have completed the construction of this long exact sequence of cohomology. So now we are done. Now let's look at the exercise 1.7.e. This exercise about the, the mapping cone. Suppose there's a morphism of complexes mu from compl complex A to complex B. And suppose the C is a single complex associated with this double complex. By this, he means we can think of this diagram consisting of uh, two, two complexes and morphism connecting them as a double complex. And there's a total complex associated to this double complex. We can take the direct sum of the objects in each diagonal lines and we denote the direct sum of uh, a superscript uh, i plus 1 and uh, b superscript i to be a uh, C superscript I. And this C superscript will form a single complex or total complex associated with this uh, double complex. Now, and now we get a short exact sequence. And this arrow will be the embedding of uh, B sub I to this direct sum. And this arrow will be a projection of this direct sum to its first argument, uh, a superscript i plus 1. To make the superscripts uh, consistent, let's denote uh, a superscript i plus 1 by d superscript i, so that this short exact sequence becomes uh, B supply, C supply, and D supply. Now by exercise 1.7.f, there's a long exact sequence of cohomologies of the complexes uh, D, B, C, D, B, C. Now let's plug uh, A superscript I minus 1 back to this long exact sequence. The I minus 1's cohomology of the com complex D is actually the same as the ith cohomology uh, of the complex A by this relation. And the ith cohomology of D is actually the I plus 1's cohomology of the complex A. So this is the, the long exact sequence we can get uh, about this uh, mapping cone.